Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're trying to determine the value for the static coefficient of friction of an object with mass m on this incline that has an angle of 30 degrees. Once we find out what that is, oh, and by the way, the condition is that we want m to begin to accelerate. In other words, what will be the value for mu sub s that will allow m to begin to accelerate down the incline? such that the net force is larger than zero. In other words, the force pulling the m down the incline is greater than the opposing friction force, static friction force that is. And secondly, once it begins to accelerate, then we want to find out what that acceleration is. If we assume that mu sub k is 0.8 or 80%, the value of mu sub s, because mu sub k, the kinetic coefficient of friction, is always lower than the static coefficient of friction. So first, let's, be, let's begin by determining mu sub s. And we can do that by saying we want the net force, F net, to be greater than zero. And we have to establish what the net force is. So first of all, we have the force due to gravity, mg. We have the perpendicular component, mg cosine of theta. And we have the parallel component to the incline, mg sine of theta. And this is the parallel component that will try to pull the object down the incline. We also have the normal force, the reactionary force, the surface pushing back, and that normal force is equal to the magnitude of the perpendicular component, mg cosine of theta. And then we have the friction force. Now since without friction the object will slide down the incline, the direction of the friction force will be therefore in the opposite direction, force friction, and the equation for the friction force by definition, it's equal to the normal force times mu. In this case, we use the static coefficient of friction because it's stationary at this moment, which is equal to mg cosine of theta times mu sub s. All right, now that we have all the forces, we can go ahead and say that the net force, which is all the forces aiding the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration. And those must be greater than zero. The force aiding, assuming of course that the acceleration is in this direction, we can say that this is mg sine of theta minus the force opposing, which is mg cosine of theta times mu sub s. And that must be greater than zero. We can divide both sides by mg, which means that the sine of theta minus the cosine of theta times mu sub s must be greater than zero. Moving this to the other side, that means that the sine of theta must be greater than the cosine of theta times mu sub s. And then dividing both sides by the cosine of theta, you see the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta is greater or must be greater than mu sub s. And we can turn that into the tangent of theta. Must be greater than mu sub s. And mu sub s is mu sub s. Well, we'll just write mu sub s. And finally, of course, we can plug in the value for theta, which is 30 degrees. We want the tangent of 30 degrees to be greater than mu sub s. Thus, what is mu sub s equal to? 30, take the tangent, and that means 0 0.577 must be greater than mu sub s, and that's sub s, which means that the moment we lower mu sub s to the point that it's less than 0.577, the object will begin to slide. Before that, if mu sub s is greater than 5.77, the object will remain in place and not begin to slide down. So we can say that the borderline case is that mu sub s is equal to 0 0.577. That's where the object will begin to slide. Now let's take 80% of that. So point times 0 0.8. That means that mu sub k, which is 0 0.8 times mu sub s, must therefore equal 0 0.41 make it 41, oh, not 41, but 462. So mu sub k is 80% of that. And if mu sub k is 80% of that, 
and the angle is 30 degrees, let's find out what the acceleration will be. So for part B, the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. In this case, the force aiding is still going to be mg sine of theta, and the force opposing is going to be mg cosine of theta, but instead of mu sub s in the static situation, is going to be mu sub k because now the object is sliding and we divide that by the mass of the object m. Notice that all the m's cancel out and we have the acceleration is equal to g sine theta minus g cosine theta times mu sub k. And then all we have to do here is simply plug in those values. So this is equal to g, I can factor out a g, let's make it a little bit easier, times the sine of theta minus the cosine of theta times mu sub k. And so this is equal to 9.8 times the sine of 30 minus the cosine of 30 times mu sub k, which is 0 0.462. All right, now let's see what that's equal to. So if you take the 30, take the cosine of that times point. 462, make that minus, plus the sine of 30, the sine of 30 equals, and so that gives us, this is equal to 9.8 times 0 0.1, which is 0 0.98 meters per second square. And that will be the acceleration of that block once mu sub s is lowered enough so that the block begins to slide. Once that happens, the kinetic friction is less, and therefore the difference between mg sine theta and the opposing frictional force is large enough to accelerate it at 0.98 meters per second square. And that's how it's done.